This makes me believe that in the back of Kevin Durant's mind, he's gonna go join LeBron with the Lakers. This is yet another reason <laughs> Bill Belichick should have been fired. Almost all of the good players are playing on a team. It's time to be concerned. LeBron James, when he went to Miami, that was the first time we saw an all time just get up and leave. He didn't get traded, he got up and left. All the other greats had gotten traded up until that point. So now, guys like KD makes it real easy for them to pack up their back because Skip, the first time is the hardest. Once you do something once, it gets a lot easier to do it the second time around. What if Kevin Durant says, okay, we just won another championship, that would be what, a three-peat? Three-peat. And then he says, I I've got two homes in the Los Angeles area. I'm gonna join my friend LeBron James and we're going to win a championship. And this might be LeBron's last hurrah here, right. but, but we're gonna go win, a, I, I'm going to help him win a championship. Would that not be a storybook ending for oh. both of them? This makes me believe that in the back of Kevin Durant's mind, or maybe even the middle I of agree. his mind, he's gonna go join LeBron with the Lakers, or that's a serious thought in his mind. Because usually if you're asked about a player moving teams and you support him, you're like, hey, he did what made him happy. I'm, I'm happy for him. Best for he his did family. what's best for his family. Mm -hmm. To go to, I absolutely love it. It's perfect. Twice you said that. I. It's hard for me to think of a situation as a player thinking about another player moving, being like that excited about it. Of course Kevin Durant liked what LeBron did because Kevin Durant is like about half of America. He's incredibly comfortable with change. Kevin Durant went to three different high schools, starred in all of them. He went to four places in three and a half years. He grew up in DC, went to college in Texas, drafted by Seattle, and they immediately moved to Oklahoma City. His high school graduation to his second year in the NBA, four places, thrived in all of them. I was one of the ones I didn't like the move that KD made only because he went to Golden State, they're 73 and nine, but he was a free agent. He's free to go wherever he wants to go. But I'm on KD's side, but I need KD to have turtle shell for skin, not onion skin, which is thin, because he hears everything. The problem that I got with CJ is that you had him on your podcast. You could have said you were soft to his face for going to join Golden State. I am with you times 10 because I am completely on Kevin Durant's side, whether he was speaking from a position of strength or not. CJ has made noise about criticizing Kevin's decision. He hasn't called him soft, but he had already made some noise about he shouldn't have left Oklahoma City and gone to Golden State. So that's why Kevin went on combatively. Like he, he wanted to, if it was gonna resort to trash talk, whatever it was. And I thought Kevin went on and just handed it to CJ on his own podcast. If you're KD and you go to a 73 win team that won a championship before you, I, I didn't criticize him when he went. We all have given him love for leading oh, yeah. that team to championships mm -hmm. and being the finals MVP. But I, I gotta be honest, I think it's hard to talk trash in that situation. I think you should win gracefully because you're not going to win the trash talk debate when you went to the 73 and 9 right. team that won it without you and then you want to brag. It was dismissive. Mm -hmm. He later in the podcast told CJ to get out of his feelings, which is the definition of irony, Kevin Durant telling anyone to get out of his feelings. And then Durant did what he always does, which is takes to Twitter to argue with people, argue with Nate Jones, argue with CJ, argue with other random people. And so I, I'm not surprised at any of this from Durant. I credit CJ for nailing exactly what happened. And like, this is just what we need to come to expect from Kevin Durant. But you're never going to win. I mean, you're a professional athlete, second best player in the world, and you can't win these types of battles. Like you. There's a certain amount of respect that I just expect KD to have for the game and for the guys playing the game. It's hard to be a professional athlete. It's hard to be able to win. Like, but I'm not going to disrespect guys. This is yet another reason <laughs> Bill Belichick should have been fired. And I am dead serious about this. I don't care how great a coach he is. This is out and out mutiny. This is rebellion against Robert Kraft, who slapped him on the wrist and said, nope, 
for the first time, I'm going to intervene in football affairs, football decision making, and you are going to trade Jimmy Garoppolo and you are going to stick with Tom Brady, whether you like it or not. Coach Belichick, for the better part of 19 years, has kept him at arm's length. Um, his dad's mentioned it. Tom has even mentioned on occasion that they've really never had a type of relationship outside of player coach. They don't go to lunch together. Basically, when they get together, it's talking football. And for Coach Belichick, for a guy that's on another team to text him, congratulations, keep it going, that's that's huge. That probably hurt Tom. Bill Belichick was forced to trade Jimmy Garoppolo. That's been reported multiple times. The Boston Herald uh, confirmed again this week that it has created a rift between Tom and Belichick. Belichick did not want to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo. And I was sitting there this morning thinking, this is the Romeo and Juliet, a love story ripped apart. Just trying to prove Robert Kraft wrong. He wants Robert Kraft to say, you know what, you were right. Mm -hmm. I I shouldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. And now his whole being seems to be focused on, he's not on to Cincinnati, he's on to Jimmy G. Day after day, he's on to Jimmy G. He's going to show him. And Belichick's got five Super Bowl rings, so I think he's saying, I'm, I'm good. So now his new cause is to prove that he was right. He had a succession plan, Skip. You know how this thing worked. <laughs> Guy at the company, he's there for 25 years. They find his successor. Now, sometimes they'll let you retire on your own. But when that guy's really good, they'll speed up that process to get you up out of there. Hmm. Coach Belichick had a succession plan, and he believed that the guy he had was ready to do it, and he was trying to speed up Tom Brady's process. Hmm. And Mr. Kraft put a kibosh on that. We're past the 4th of July. It's time to be concerned because almost all of the good players are playing on a team, even a one-year deal. So now that we're talking about Des Bryant and he's unattached to a team, that has a great deal of concern. We're in a position where Cleveland, they might have an emergency at the position, but I then circle back to the reason he's unemployed, which is, man, I just put my whole future, my franchise, in Baker Mayfield. Does Des make Baker's job easier or harder? Look at what he did to Dak Prescott's development. Because he is a dominant figure, he's a dominant voice, he's never been anything but a number one receiver. He goes in there, how comfortable is Dez going to be being the number two, the number three, the number four? Skip, he was getting seven, eight balls thrown at him a game. What happens if you cut that down in half? Mm. Okay, he gets four balls thrown at him, he catches two. Is he going to be happy? His personality right now is too strong Mm. for that locker room. I don't think he's going to be good for the culture and what they're trying to build. You got a young quarterback who you just drafted. You got young players around. And to me, and being in in the locker room with a guy like Dez Bryant, I think his personality is just too strong. I think he's going to take over, you know, with the coaches. He's going to take over with the players. And you're trying to establish something new there. And bringing in a guy like him, to me, right now, where they are, they're just too fragile of a locker room to bring him in. If you told me one year ago it would come to this for Dez Bryant, that the only potential offer on the table that we know of as camps have opened is a a plan B for the Cleveland Browns, a backup emergency plan in place of a Josh Gordon? And and I don't know if Josh does come back in two, three weeks, would he be out? 